President Trump may have spent his Thursday focusing on domestic policy, but it seems he's also been busy dealing with foreign policy issues. The Washington Post reported that Mr. Trump had a heated phone call with Australian Prime Minister Turnbull over the weekend, and the dust-up was reportedly caused, at least partially, by an Obama administration refugee agreement. Following the publication of the Washington Post story, the president tweeted this on Thursday. Do you believe it? The Obama administration agreed to take thousands of illegal immigrants from Australia. Why? I will study this dumb deal. This is a bit of an exaggeration since about 1,200 refugees, not illegal immigrants, were included in the deal. Trump's call with Prime Minister Turnbull was expected to last an hour, but according to the White House, it ended after 25 minutes. In a radio interview, Turnbull denied reports that the president hung up on him, and an Australian embassy spokesperson confirmed the Australian ambassador to the U.S. met with senior White House officials late Thursday afternoon. Here's what President Trump had to say earlier Thursday about that phone call. The world is in trouble, but we're going to straighten it out, okay? That's what I do. I fix things. We're going to straighten it out. Believe me. When you hear about the tough phone calls I'm having, don't worry about it. Just don't worry about it. They're tough. We have to be tough. It's time we're going to be a little tough, folks. We're taking Michael O'Hanlon is a senior fellow at the Brookings Institution and the co-director of the Brookings Center for 21st Century Security and Intelligence. He joins me now from Washington. So, Michael, what do you make of the president reportedly taking a hardline approach to one of our closest allies? Well, at least there was a little levity in what he said at the prayer breakfast. You would certainly hope so, since it was a prayer breakfast and not a place for angry, you know, tirades against foreign leaders. And apparently the reports on Australia and the United States, uh, Trump and Turnbull having this harsh conversation that ended with Trump hanging up on Turnbull are, are not correct, as the Australian prime minister confirmed. So I guess we do need to keep things in a little bit of perspective. But no, overall, I don't like this way. Of, of doing business where you have a warm hour long phone call with Vladimir Putin and then a curt shortish phone call with a, a key friend and ally. Uh, you know, on the one hand, I'm glad that Mr. Trump's trying to get along with the Russian president, but we do have to keep in mind who our friends are. And when we made a, a, a specific promise on taking in a relatively modest number of refugees, which has not exactly been an area where we've really uh, shown brightly under Obama or Trump, uh, I think we should honor that kind of a promise and not be miserly about it. And so I think the basis for the disagreement between between Trump and Turnbull was not very well thought through or reasonable. So, you know, uh, in summary, I think President Trump chose some pretty good people for his national security and foreign policy teams, and I'm encouraged about that. I'm encouraged that they've generally re reaffirmed the importance of alliances most of the time, but I'm not that happy about some of the tweets and phone calls. Hmm. All right, on another topic, Michael, Thursday was Secretary of State Rex Tillerson's first day. He's coming in facing a long list of challenges. What is the first thing you think he has to address? Well, one thing, certainly, is to think through Syria. As you know, President Trump has simplified the goals in Syria to the narrow uh, objective of defeating ISIS and presumably al-Qaeda, the, the Nusra Front or the Front for Conquest. And that's fine as long as we realize you're only going to have a lasting defeat if you view this as more than just a military problem. It can't just be Secretary Mattis figuring out how many more special uh, forces or advisors to put on the ground in or around Syria. It's got to envision a political solution for Syria that can end the civil war. Because if the civil war continues, uh, even after we've largely liberated uh, Raqqa and other places from ISIS, you can bet that Salafists and other extremists will come back. So I want Mr. Tillerson to become a teammate of Secretary Mattis on thinking about Syria and not reduce that problem to just a narrow tactical military problem. That would certainly be up there. Also a bigger approach to thinking about how to handle Russia in the future. So we get beyond these initial friendly vibes, which are fine as far as they go, but are not the basis for an improved relationship. And we're going to have to do some really serious thinking about how to integrate all the different dimensions of Russia policy if we're going to really chart things in a new direction. Some have suggested perhaps Russia could be part of the solution in Syria. What do you think yes. about that? I agree, actually. So 
you know, generally speaking, Secretary Tillerson, President Trump, they've been criticized for being too friendly towards Vladimir Putin and towards Russia. I think in some ways they have, but generally speaking, I'm encouraged that they want to start with a clean sheet of paper. And I think that there is a reason to think that U.S. goals in Syria are not fundamentally incompatible with those of Russia. It's going to take some creativity. And there are some tensions, for sure, in the goals of the two different superpowers there. But I think there are ways, for example, to envision creating some autonomy zones for the Sunni Muslims and Kurds in Syria, that Assad would still be president perhaps for a while, but he wouldn't rule those Sunni Muslim populations, and you have some kind of a peacekeeping force and some kind of a provisional deal like that. That may be a way where everybody can be happy, but it's going to take some really serious diplomatic work to make that possible. Hmm. Uh, also, uh, Michael, let me ask you, on Wednesday, National Security Advisor Mike Flynn said that Iran had been, quote, put on notice, end quote, following its ballistic missile tests. Is that the right message you think to be sending to Iran? Well, I don't know what it means, and so it's not particularly good if, um, if it can really sort of up the ante on bluster and move and counter move. You know, I, I think if, if Mr. Flynn were to say, uh, we view these kinds of launches as a violation of a UN Security Council resolution because the missiles are potentially nuclear capable, uh, and for us that's reason enough to be concerned. I think that would have been a better statement. It would have been more specific. It would have left the possibility of some sterner action, some new economic sanctions or what have you. It would have explained the basis for them instead of sounding more like bravado, uh, which I think is not going to go over that well with a lot of our allies. It's going to sound too much like Trump and Flynn looking to pick a fight with Iran right out of the gate. So I would have preferred more specific critiques of Iranian behavior. But, you know, General Flynn's not all wrong. There are a lot of problems in Iranian behavior. Uh, and General Mattis, Secretary Mattis is well aware of that, too. They've seen a lot of their colleagues, you know, die at the hands of weapons wielded by uh, Iraqi insurgents that came from Iran, uh, the weapons coming from Iran over the years. And so they know this is a country that's done us a lot of harm. And they're correct to be concerned about Iran. I just don't necessarily agree with that choice of words. Hmm. Uh, well, on Thursday, the Trump administration appeared to loosen sanctions against Russia put in place by the Obama administration. White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer said this was fairly common practice. Is it? Well, I'm not so sure that you know, it's common practice, but I'm most concerned about the overall trend. So these particular sanctions, which were only recently imposed, as you know, in the latter weeks of the Obama administration in response to the Russian shenanigans with our elections in 2016, uh, these are only one part of the equation. The bigger issue is the sanctions that were applied by the United States and European Union after Russia seized Crimea and then started stoking trouble in eastern Ukraine. I think it's very important that those sanctions be retained until there's some kind of agreement that satisfies the interests of Ukraine as well as Russia. That's what I'm most worried about in the sanctions department. Finally, Michael, the White House says the recent raid in Yemen that left one American Navy SEAL and several Yemeni civilians dead was a, quote, successful operation. Help us understand the White House's perspective. Uh, are they essentially obligated to say that it was a success, even if it didn't necessarily accomplish their objectives? Yeah, it doesn't look very successful to me, but I'm not going to blame the White House. You know, this, uh, I'm not going to blame anybody. These kind of things happen in war. But, you know, this is something, the planning for which President Trump inherited from President Obama. Uh, it was something that came out of Central Command. First and foremost, it sounds like a tactical tragedy. Frankly, not unlike Benghazi in some ways. Maybe there was not enough planning or just some bad luck. And uh, a few people died and one American died. It's a very sad episode. These are the sorts of things that happen in war. So I'm certainly not going to blame President Trump too much for this. It's not a success, but it's also not his fault. All right. Michael O'Hanlon, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you.